There's no reason why you can't become one of the best in the world at whatever it is that you want to do. Talent doesn't even really mean sh Today, we're going to talk about the pursuit of greatness. We're going to talk about how to bring out the best version of yourself and how to work at becoming better every single day. And I'm going to talk about you. I'm going to talk about me. And I'm also going to talk about an athlete uh, who you've probably heard of before. And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Tom Brady, who you could be a fan of, or you could be like, I hate that guy, uh, because he seems to be a polarizing figure because he wins so much. And so, um, I want to talk about him because of the fact that it's been inspiring what has happened in the past few years in the past year with him specifically and just his story and why it's inspiring to me um, from not being a fan before to now being a fan. So uh, as we dive into it and we think about it, I'm obsessed with the idea of greatness. I'm obsessed with the idea of how can I bring the best version of myself? How can I improve myself at all points in time? I remember reading a book uh, a little while ago that was called, uh, that was by Malcolm Gladwell and he talks about the 10,000 hour rule. It takes about 10,000 hours to master something, like to truly be a world-class master. And it's 10,000 hours of deliberate practice, not just practicing and having 10,000 hours of experience, but deliberate, deliberate practice where you push yourself. And I always love that idea. And the reason why I love it is because what it shows you is that talent doesn't really matter as much as skill and determination matters. Skill is something that you build and determination is something that helps you build it. Talent is something that you can be given but that talent at the same time uh, doesn't mean anything unless you obviously have a skill behind it as well. And so I love it so much, I literally have a tattoo on my wrist, which is a uh, Roman numeral X with a line above it, which is the Roman numeral for 10,000, because I want to constantly remind myself every day when I look at my wrist that this life is like a self-mastery thing, something that we're working on, trying to become better every single day. And um, when, I, when I look at what Tom Brady has done, Last night, they just won the Super Bowl. He won the Super Bowl with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He went from the, you know, being in New England for 20 years to moving down and being with one of the worst teams in the history, actually the worst team in the history of the NFL. And uh, if you're not a fan, it doesn't really matter if you're not a fan because if you listen to his story, you can start to see how his story can be very similar to the story that you're building in your life. And I think that if you think about it the right way, it could be, an, honestly, uh, inspiration to anyone. And uh, I wasn't really a Tom Brady fan up until five years ago. And the reason why was because he was just always winning in New England. And I was like, is this guy ever going to stop winning? And it kind of pissed me off. And then five years ago, uh, they were in the Super Bowl and his team was down by 25 points in the Super Bowl. And they came back and won. And I was like, all right, whether I like his team or not, you have to respect somebody who is just a winner. Just what you have to realize in life is that winners win. And this dude, <clears throat> excuse me, is just a winner. That's all there is to it. And you've got to respect that. Whether you like him or not, you got to respect, damn, this guy just wins. Well, a year ago, he left New England, started all over after 20 years. He's been in the NFL for 20 years. And he started off with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I happen to be a Tampa Bay Bucks fan, and I have been because I actually grew up in Tampa. So I have been my entire life. Um, but we have basically the worst team in the history of the NFL. We have the, the lowest winning percentage of any team in the history of the NFL. And we have Tom Brady come down, come down and change all of that around, which is really an interesting thing when you start to think about it. We hadn't won a playoff game in literally 13 years. How do I want a playoff game in 13 years? I'm sorry, we haven't won a playoff game in 17 years. We hadn't been to the playoffs in 13 years, and we hadn't won a Super Bowl in 19 years. And he comes down there, and there's a reason why the Tampa Bay Bucks are called, you know, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have a nickname of the Tampa Bay Suckaneers is because they've always sucked. That's really what it is. But he moves down to what is known as the worst organization as far as winning percentage in the history of the NFL. And now he starts to change everything around with who he is, with his culture. And he comes down also in the middle of a pandemic. So what that means is he's moving from one system, one team to a new system, a new team, new players, a new offense, which is basically like learning a brand new language. They can't have practices because of all of the COVID stuff that's happening. There's no preseason. And the guy literally goes on and wins the Super Bowl. And when you look at that, you go, holy shit, that's a pretty big deal. How does that happen? Not only does it happen, the road to getting there was quite insane as well. What do I mean by that? If you know anything about football, 
he had to beat Drew Brees on the road. Then the very next game, he had to beat Aaron Rodgers on the road. In the very next game, the Super Bowl, he had to beat Patrick Mahomes, who is considered the, the newest up-and-coming best quarterback, who just got a $500 million contract, beats him in the Super Bowl as well. And when you look at what he's done, you look at him and you go, wow, this is inspiring. At least I look at him and go, this is inspiring because it shows you a guy who was overlooked he was picked number 199 in the draft, which means that when he went in the draft, 198 players went before him, which means that the people who are paid millions of dollars to figure out the best players in the world did not think that he was good enough to pick until 199. He had six quarterbacks that were picked before him. And so it shows you they didn't even think he was the, they, they thought he was the seventh best quarterback. And so this guy literally proves that people who guess about how good that you think that you are or what you can be don't know shit because 198 people went before him. I mean, what does that show you? It shows you that he was able to prove all of the teams wrong, that he was better than all 198 people. But those people who are paid millions of dollars overlooked this guy because he didn't have the talent, because he didn't have the skill, because he didn't have the right mindset, whatever it is. And you start to look at it. And when I look at someone like this, I go, what can I learn from someone that is of this caliber, who's basically the Michael Jordan of football, right? And you look at it and you say, what can I learn from watching greatness, real live greatness? And there's a couple things that I noticed I wanna teach you guys. The first thing, his entire life is built around football. Everything he does is built around football. He has a family and obviously, takes really good care of his family, all of that stuff. He's married to a supermodel. They have three or four kids. I think it's four. And he, he has his entire life that's built around football and his family. But every single thing that he does during the season and after the season is built around how he can be the best player that he can be. The guy literally is 43 years old. The average player in the NFL is 26. So he is 17 years older than the average player. Nobody lasts for 20 plus seasons like he is. Nobody's ever won a Super Bowl at 43 years old. But then you look at how is it possible for someone to be that old, you know, and, and, and be able to compete against people who are 17 years younger than him. And his entire life is built around it. He has, you know, this whole thing he calls a TB12 system, where it's the food that he eats, the way that he works out. The guy doesn't have any processed foods. He doesn't eat any sugar. He doesn't drink any alcohol. He has no dairy. He has no inflammatory foods. He eats 80% vegetables, 20% meat. And his entire workout is not built around building muscle. It's around how he can get his muscles to work the best. And it's not about how big he can get. It's how can he continue to use his muscles the way that they need to be for him to throw the ball and for him to be able to get hit. And the guy has now been to 10 Super Bowls, which has never happened before. He's won seven of them, which has never happened before. But once again, he was drafted in the sixth round, number 199, six quarterbacks were taken before him. So he's not talented. What is he? He's driven and he's skilled. Why should this give you hope? Because no matter where you are in your life, if you find what you want to do and you're driven towards that thing, you can build the skills up that you need to. And that's the thing that Will Smith says. Will Smith says he's never been really talented at anything, but skill and drive will, be, will eat talent for lunch. We all know somebody who's been an incredible athlete. They're super talented, but they don't have the work ethic to go with it. And what happens? They go, you know, really high into the NBA draft or the NFL draft or the MLB draft or whatever draft it is. They go really high into it. But because of the fact that their whole life has been built around talent and not skill, they don't become what they could be. But then you also always hear about people like Tom Brady and other people who nobody knows who the hell they are. They get drafted under the radar, but they work and they work and they work and they work and they work. And they work. They become better and they become better and they become better. And what happens is it shows you that talent doesn't even really mean shit, which should be great because it shows you that if you find something that you love, if you find something that you can commit to 100% with every ounce of your being, you can find your own version of greatness. What does that greatness look like to you? What is greatness in your mind and what do you want to master? Have you ever thought about that? 
Where do you want to bring your greatness out of the world? How do you want to bring your greatness out to the world? What is your medium where you are going to show that you're one of the best in the world? And you might not even be started at this thing right now, but if you put time and effort and energy and hardcore willpower into what this thing is, if you're like Tom Brady, you can win. And that's what's amazing. Winners win. Doesn't matter your talent. Doesn't matter where you are. If you're sitting out there right now and you're like, you know what? I kind of like singing. I would like to become a professional singer, even if you've never taken any singing lessons, but you're pretty good right now. You're like, I got a little bit of talent. Let me take some lessons. Let me work at it every day and every day. Let me work on my singing and my songwriting, my guitar playing and my singing and my songwriting, guitar playing. And you work at it every single day. There's no reason why you can't be one of the best in the world. Isn't that the cool thing? I, like, I think that is the most amazing thing about being a human is if I find one thing that I am hardcore about, I can become the best of the world if I really want to. So if you look at that, my first question to you is, what is the thing that you want to put your life into? What is it? Do you know what it is? If you don't know what it is, can you find it? What is it that you'd be like, if I could be the best in the world at one thing, what would that thing be? Because if I could put my talents and my skills and my drive into this thing, I could become one of the best. There's no reason why you can't become one of the best in the world at whatever it is that you want to do. And that's what's amazing about being a work about being a workhorse and going for what it is that you want. But if we're looking back at Tom Brady, his entire life is built around being one of the best football players ever and to be one of the best football players, his diets, his workouts, what time he goes to sleep, all of the stuff that he does on a daily basis is built around how can he become the best and how can he sustain where he currently is at 43 years old, playing with people that are 17 years younger than him on average and realize that he can continue to keep playing for at least the next two, three, four, maybe five years. The dude could play until he's 50 years of football. One of the hardest sports in the entire world. He could play up until 50 years old. Why? Because he's dedicated his life to this thing. What do you want to dedicate your life to? Think about that. Once you figure out what that thing is, then you got to ask yourself the question, okay, now that I've figured out what this thing is, what do I need to do? Okay, so what do I need to start doing in order to become one of the best in the world. Let's go back to the singer-songwriter. Okay, if I want to become a singer-songwriter, I should probably sing every single day, work on my vocals, try to become better. I should probably write songs every single day. I should probably go to, you know, take songwriting lessons. You can take those online. Whatever it is that you want to do, you can master. So then you say, what should I start doing in order to become the greatest at whatever this is? Okay, what should I stop doing in order to continue, in order to actually go and to become the best version of this. Okay, maybe I should stop drinking alcohol and drinking coffee because those things can mess with your vocal cords. I don't know. It's something along those lines you can figure out. So you, what, what do you need to start doing? What do you need to stop doing? Okay, next question. For you to become one of the best in the world at whatever it is that you want to do, who should you surround yourself with? Let's say you want to become an actor. Okay, what should you start doing? What should you stop doing? Who should you surround yourself with in order to become an actor? Who should you stop surrounding yourself with if you want to become the best actor in the world? Who should you get around? Who should you get away from? These are all things you should think about. And you start realizing that greatness isn't just something that people are born with. Some, greatness is something that is built. And that's amazing because you can be great at whatever it is that you want to do. And if I look at my life, if I look at everything that I've done, I've tried to build my life around becoming one of the best at what I do, one of the best podcasters in the world, one of the best mindset mentors in the world, one of the best, you know, writers in the world, which I have a book coming out and we're working on it right now. And so it's like, I've built my entire life around this and I'm not an NFL quarterback or an elite athlete or any of that type of stuff, but I'm a podcaster, I'm a YouTuber, I'm a quote unquote social media influencer, even though I hate that phrase, but that's would be the category that I fall into. And my goal is to help change the mindset of the world. And so the more that I learn, that helps me teach. So then I've got to build a system of how I can learn every single day. And I have an hour built out every single day where I'll follow certain neurologists or psychologists or people that are in early childhood development so that I can learn more about mindset and about the brain so that I can teach more of these things so I can help more people. I've built a system around it, right? From the moment I wake up, I've tried to figure out a way of when I wake up to support me to become better. I, I wake up earlier so that I have more time to work on myself because the better that I am, the better that I go into the day. So then I have my morning routine built around this. 
I don't drink a whole lot of alcohol. Why don't I drink a whole lot of alcohol? Not because I don't like it, but because of the fact that alcohol stays in your system for 80 hours. And I know that if I'm gonna try to learn every single day and retain this information and then teach it to people and then make content and try to put it all down and, and you know take something complex and put it into something that people can understand, if I have alcohol running through my system from a couple days before that's making me a little bit foggier than if I hadn't drank it, then why would I drink it in the first place? And so for me, it just doesn't necessarily fit with the lifestyle that I'm built and what I'm trying to do, right? I'm just giving you these examples because it's, it's examples that you could use in your life as well. The food I eat and when I eat, you know, I found that if I eat heavy foods, I get really tired. So guess what? I don't eat any heavy foods. I found very specific things that I can eat in the middle of the day to, that don't take energy away from me because digestion is the number one thing that can steal energy away from your body. So if I'm trying to create content like I am right now, if I were to eat a hamburger 30 minutes ago, I would be foggy as hell right now. And if I'm foggy in my brain, I'm not going to be given the best content I possibly can. So I pay attention to, you know, the food that I eat, working out. This freaking body of mine is my vessel. And the better that it's the shape that it's in, the better I'm going to be able to come up with content, to deliver content, every single thing. So it's from the moment that I wake up, the food that I eat, the alcohol that I don't drink, the working out, the water that I drink, all of these things are built into a system for me to be able to learn more, to create better content, to deliver more content than anybody else that's in my industry, to possibly become one of the best in the world at what it is that I do. Right? So my life is built around how can I be the best at this thing that I'm doing right now? And that's cool. The reason why is because I wasn't born gifted in this thing that I'm doing now. You know, I wasn't born the, one of the, the top podcasters in the world. Neither were you. So if you want to start a podcast, what's different between me and you? Nothing. I've just got a few years on you. So why can't you build one of the biggest podcasts in the world? Why can't you be one of the biggest YouTubers in the world? Why can't you be one of the best athletes in the world? Why can't you be one of the best singers in the world? Why can't you be one of the best actors in the entire world? The only thing that's holding you back is the limiting beliefs that you don't think that you can actually do it. And you need to figure out what it is that you want to dedicate your life to and put every ounce of energy into it. That's the beautiful thing about greatness. That's the beautiful thing about mastery. So you start to look at every single thing that you do. What does it look like for you? What would make your life easier? If you want to become a YouTuber, what would make it easier for you to create content? If you want to become the best singer, what would make it easier for you to make more incredible music? If you want to become the best artist in the world, what do you need to do in order to become the best artist in the world? Who do you need to surround yourself with? What things on a daily basis? What alcohol should you or should you not drink, right? What food should you or should you not eat? How often should you or should you not work out? Who should you surround yourself with? And what you realize is that greatness is not something that people are born with. Greatness is something that you build yourself into. It's literally right there for every single person to take if they want to. But the difference is you have to figure out what it is that you're willing to put your entire life into. If you don't know what it is, that's okay. But can you figure out what it is? And then once you figure out what that thing is, say, how can I build a system, a life that supports me in every single aspect to become absolutely great at being a singer, at being an actor, at being a YouTuber, at being a musician, at being whatever it is, an artist, whatever it is that you truly want to be. Greatness is so freaking close to you, but you have to, number one, decide what it is. Number two, you have to fully commit to it. Number three, you have to ask yourself, what systems can I build in my life to make it easier for me to become better at this thing that I want to become better at. And then you have to realize it takes 10,000 hours. So it's got to be something that you love. What do I need to do to work my ass off to become one of the best in the world at this thing? If you can figure out what it is and you can put every ounce of energy into it, I promise you this, you won't get to the end of your life and be on your deathbed and think, damn, I wish I would have done more. Greatness is within you. You just have to make the decision to bring it out. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you wanna learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. But what if I told you that in 10 years, 10 years from today, you will have a life that you absolutely love, like the perfect life. Would that excite you?